As always, we are thankful to the one true living God for his divine wisdom and his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. We thank him for sending to us his servants, the prophets, and the apostles. Most of all, we thank him for the way of holiness revealed to his servants for our learning. We are grateful for the perfect word of God that's infallible, has no errors, have no flaws. All errors and all flaws can only be in us, the human family. To all of our ministering brethren that are present and if there's any ministers that are visiting, you're welcome to come up and if you can find a place, you can make yourself at home. We had a beautiful meeting last night and last night alone, 46 souls went down in water. Forty-six souls, and the net just keep getting filled with more and more all the time. Now I believe in two weeks we will be in uh, Houston, Texas. We'll be starting a new work there in Houston. We went for the first time last year. We baptized 156 souls in two nights. And... Um, Ever since then, ever since then in Houston, the people have just been pouring and pouring in from all over. And our work is hard, but it's necessary. Many people go to church, but they don't understand the work that's behind getting things together for people's soul. Now, Charlotte, God willing, we're going to try to... Uh, Eliminate this every other week and get you moving every week down here. And I spoke to our minister, Minister Jones, he had to reach out to the people and see can we use that facility every week instead of every other week. Because the truth of the matter is you need this message every day. get it every day is still not enough. I am very grateful to see my brother and sister, brother and sister Carver. I thank God for them. Moreover, um, the mother and father were two of the first members out of Bakersville, North Carolina that was with us until they passed away many years ago. And I thank God much for them being here. They uh, was reaching out to us. They wanted to be baptized. And I'm glad for my brother, Brother Minister Harris, went on up there towards the mountains and baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ. So it's a blessing to see all these young soldiers and lined around the walls and men who really want to be saved and elderly brothers and young brothers and elderly mothers and young sisters. This is the best thing in town now. And as Brother Minister Evans mentioned, you know, people want us everywhere. And I only can be in one place at a time and this is why I'm glad for brothers whom the Lord bless us to send. And uh, we have a European tour coming up this year. We have the European conference that will be held in London. And from London we go to the Netherlands. And then from the Netherlands we're scheduled to go to Germany. And then come back here to America for a while. In fact when I get back. It'll be a few weeks before our International Holy Convocation in July. After that, we have an African tour coming up. We'll be on the African island of Mauritius and the island of Rodriguez. We'll combine both locations for our convention there. Then when we leave there, we'll come up to South Africa and stop in Johannesburg. One of the most racist places in Africa. 
but uh, we have a good sized crowd down there who've been watching us over social media. We sent one of our bishops there. He baptized a beautiful crowd in the name of Jesus Christ. So we'll be going there to Johannesburg and from Johannesburg, we have come up and stop at uh, Malawi for the first Malawi Holy Convocation there. And after that's over, we have stopped in Mozambique for the first Mozambique Holy Convocation there. And then uh, I guess we'll come home after that. <laughs> the work is growing not just here in America, but literally in so many foreign countries abroad. People are hungry of every race and of every nationality. Uh, I don't want my elderly brothers to stand. Tell the, let the elderly brother come on and have a seat, Brother Jose. Brother, we don't want the elder, none of the elder brothers stand. You young, let the elder brother come on up to the front. Bring them to the front and let one of the young heads get up. Don't ever let the old head stand. The young brothers can get up and stand to Jesus come. Yeah, come on, let the brothers get seated and let them get rested. One of you young brothers in the front, you surrender your seat. And let the old heads always get seated. That goes for the mothers also. I never want to see our elderly mothers and our elderly brothers stand. Never. The moment you see them, it's time for you to rise and give up and give over and give in. I was raised that way. You, know, you always look out for our elderly brothers and sisters. All right, let's get your recipe books open. I want to talk about spiritual distractions this afternoon. Oh, my God. Oh. No. <laughs> Why, good night. Everybody must be messed up this afternoon. <laughs> All of us can bear witness. In life, everybody has some form of distraction. Everybody. And sometimes we are distracted and don't even realize it. But the objective of distraction is to eliminate your focus, get you out of focus. And that which you are focused on is like having a camera lens. You know, I don't care how beautiful the image is. If your lens are not properly focused, then your picture do not captivate the beauty of what you're looking at. There's a beautiful thing about holiness. There's a beautiful thing about God. But if we're out of focus, we rob ourselves from experiencing the beauty or the blessings that God have to offer us as a people. Amen. Now, the Bible teaches us to present your body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. <clears throat> Anyone who's trying to offer themselves to the service of God will not offer themselves successfully all the time. Are you listening? I, 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 it doesn't matter how much you want to do it all the time. But you will not be successful all the time. You're going to have some good days and some hills to climb. <laughs> it's going to be tough, brother. Naturally speaking, if you're on the long journey, the length of the journey challenge your stamina. So in the midst of that journey, you become exhausted. Because the journey wears down and tears down your body and challenges your willpower to stay on the journey. This holy journey towards the kingdom of God is not an easy path to take. 
And anybody tell you serving God is easy, that's the devil. That's right. Whoever tell you that, you're looking right in the devil's eyes. Yeah. Amen. It is hard to obey God in everything. There are some things it's easy to do. But then there are some things it challenges your salvation. Because if you tell the truth about yourself, you know, I hear people testify that I thank God for delivering me from a miserable life of sin. Mm -hmm. Sounds very wonderful and full of conviction. And, amen. Very heartfelt. <laughs> but my question to you is, were you miserable when you were sinning? Or were you happy and smiling? Because most people that I've seen sinning they enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Am I right, I said? Yes, now, the enjoyment of sin help keep us prisoners of sin. That's right. Now, here comes Jesus with the teaching that's opposite from everybody. Hate your own life. Right. Who in the world tell you to hate your life? Another scripture says no man hateth his own flesh. So Jesus come along, hate your own life. That man that loved that Budweiser, he don't want to hate that beer. He don't want to hate Jack or Daniels. He don't want to hate Mr. and Mrs. Vodka. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hate Brother Reefer. And amen. And they don't want to hate Brother Reefer. They don't want to hate uh, Brother Crack mm, and Sister Opium. And they don't want to hate. They don't want. They don't want to hate those over the counter pills that they're addicted to. So the Lord step in and see the condition of the world and told us, hate your own life. In fact, I better read that before I go to the book of Jasher. In the book of St. Luke chapter 14. All right, let's give away with some more juice here. Let's have it. St. Luke chapter 14 and we're at verse 26. Follow me. If any man come to me. All right, uh, now, this will challenge whether you really even came to Jesus. That's right. Yes. Someone said when I went to church, so do roaches. <laughs> Roaches come to church, but they don't come to Jesus. Amen. Well, Pastor, did I go to church every Sunday? That don't mean nothing. You got priests that live in church. That's true. That don't mean nothing. That's true. Coming to church don't mean you came to Jesus. Right. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. Now, I want you to judge yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like I'm picking on you, well, get over it. <laughs> Because I didn't write the Bible. Give chapter and verse. St. Luke chapter 14. Wait a minute. Call chapter and verse again. St. Luke. My name is not Luke. St. Luke. So if you're getting mad, you better get mad at Saint Brother Luke. Luke. That's right. Get mad at St. Luke. St. Luke. Uh, he's dead now, but you can still get mad at him. That's right. I want you to see what the Lord says through Brother Luke. In St. Luke chapter 14, we'll start at verse 25. All right. And there were great multitudes with him. Uh -huh. And he turned and said unto them. What? If any man come to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, Jesus talks some hard talk. Oh, yeah. Now, I want you to get this, family. I want you to get this. If any man come to me. If any man come to me. To me. To me. And hate not his father. Uh-oh. Hate. Hate. Now let, now, let me explain this hate business. So I said, Pastor Jenna, I thought you're not supposed to hate nobody. I'll explain it. <laughs> I love my father, Pastor Jenna. Well, I love mine too when he was little. Mm -hmm. But it's not talking about that. It's talking about hating a lifestyle that contradicts the lifestyle of God. That's right. Amen. That contradicts it. Mm -hmm. It's just the chord. There must be something in the chord here. That's, that's, that's Yeah, there's a shortage there. So if you got another one, you can give me another one or turn this on. Yeah, this is on. This is on? Yeah. All right. That's on. Mm -hmm. You see that. You keep reading while Matt is checking this out. And there were great multitudes with him. I don't want no one to 
have an excuse to think that the Lord don't hate their way. That's right. All right, come on. And there were great multitudes with him. There was a great multitude with him. And he turned and said unto, th unto them. And he turned and said to them. If any man come to me. If any man, how many here really believe that they came to Jesus sometime in their life? Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Don't be ashamed. I mean, you are here to find out. Is that right? Yeah. You believe you came to Jesus, don't you, Will? Yes, sir. <laughs> you came to Jesus? I came to Jesus. I'm not even going to elaborate it. Come on. <laughs> you started reading it. Come on. If any man <laughs> come to me. If any man come to me. And hate not his father. Look at the terms. And I want you to judge yourself. And see, did you really come to him? Mm -hmm. Hate not his father. What do you mean? If your father have a lifestyle or any code of conduct that violate the word of God, you have to love your father as being your father, but you got to hate his lifestyle. That's right. Because you got to put the standard of God above your family. That's right. Don't you hear? If any man come to me. I got everybody. Black, white, brown, yellow, short, tall, fat, any. skinny. Ugly, think you look good, blind, or you can see, bald head, afro, mm -hmm. dreadlocks, no locks, whatever you got. Any man. Any man. Any man. Any man. If any man come to me and hate not his father. Hate not his father. And mother. Wait a minute. I told you this is not no family salvation. That's right. And this certainly is not a family religion. No. And this is not at all a family church. That's right. God said hate your father and who else? And mother. Oh, now you got to hate this lifestyle of your smoking, drinking, gambling, lottery playing mama. That's right. You got to hate it so that you're not buying your mama cigarettes no more. Yeah. Not buying her that case of beer no more. Mm. Not playing blackjack and gym rummy and gambling with your mama no more. Amen. Not going out buying her a lottery ticket no more. Amen. Mm -hmm. Why? You got to hate that life now. That's right. Now, proof that you came to God is when you're striving to abstain from the wickedness that you love. Amen. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Amen. Proof that you came to Jesus is that you now strive to abstain, turn away from your former life. That's right. You're not going to turn totally overnight. You're not. You're going to struggle with some things. Thank God, but you have to make an attempt to turn. That's right. Turn. Don't you hear the Bible says in the book of Chronicles, mm -hmm. if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Now, I want us to be honest with ourselves. How many here still have wicked ways? Raise your hands. Amen. If anybody have their hand down, I'm going to let you know you're a liar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why? Because the turning process is not finished. That's right. Eh? That's right. The turning process mm -hmm. is not finished. The turning process is not complete. And for that cause, you cannot judge nobody else other than yourself. If my people. Do you hear the word of God talking? In 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14. Follow me. Follow me. Mm -hmm. Follow me, Charlotte. Amen. Second mm -hmm. Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. All right. If my people. You still got wickedness in you, don't you, Will? Yes, sir. Sometimes you feel it while I'm preaching, don't you? Yes, sir. Feel it bubbling on the inside. Yes, sir. And sometimes it come on the outside, don't you? Amen. Uh -huh. You just feel like, don't you? <laughs> Do you feel the wickedness in you now? No, Pastor. You don't? don't? <laughs> you may not feel it, but you know it's there. It's, I know it's there. It's somewhere hiding there. <laughs> oh, that's it. God. Holy Ghost says, if my people, if my people, which are called by my name, what should we do? Shall humble themselves. Hold it. Humble. Humble, humble themselves. I want to take us to school this afternoon. Amen. A lot of us is praying without humility. That's right. Prayer without humility is a prayer that won't be answered. 
That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Amen. I don't care who you are, what you have, what you own, how tough, how bad you think you are. You're nothing but a piece of dust That's to it. have temporary air in your nostrils. That's it. And when God snatched the breath out of your body, your body would drop like the clay that it is. That's right. Do you hear what I'm telling you? If my people. If my people which are called by my name. Shall humble themselves. Humble themselves. Then what? And pray. Notice prayer is not before humility. No. Humility is before prayer. That's right. You must have humility first. If you want to reach God after. That's right. And most time when people pray, they're in trouble. Oh, yeah, they're in trouble right then. They're crying and snotting and sneezing and putting mucus on everybody. And right then, they, if, if possible, they grab Jesus' hem of his garment. That's right. I mean, if Jesus was walking, they'd grab his leg and he'd be dragging them all Dragon down the all. street. Amen. Amen. But when people feel as though everything is nice and dandy, they ain't praying for nothing. No. They're just out there shaking their hips and partying and dancing and gambling and swearing and cussing and acting like the fool that you are. That's right. The moment you get some bad news from the doctor, now you want Jesus. <laughs> Am I right? Amen. Otherwise, in that, you don't want Jesus. You want to be out there with Snoop Dogg and dancing and popping your fingers and rapping and tapping and thinking about Jesus. That's right. The moment you get bad news, what's the first thing you say? Jesus. Amen. Am I right, I said? Amen. What? Listen. <laughs> Why would you call Jesus and you ain't serving him? Why don't you call the one you're serving? When you hear bad news, don't call Jesus. Just say, Satan. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You're serving the devil. That's right. You better give me Matthew chapter 7 and begin at verse 21. Amen. I want all of you to follow me. Follow me. Follow me in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You may think I'm making this up, and it may tickle you some, but let's go to work in the Bible. Follow me. Matthew chapter 7, we're starting at verse 21. All right, William. Not everyone that saith unto me. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, 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 shall enter into the kingdom of shall, heaven. Shall be saved. But everyone that's calling on everyone. the Lord, that don't mean they're going to be saved. No. Enter into the kingdom of heaven, but what? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Wait a minute. You got to do the will of him that's in heaven? Amen. You got something to do, beer drinker. Oh, yeah. You got something to do, cigarette sucker. That's right. Whether you blow vapor or whether you blow tobacco smoke. Amen. You got something to do, blunt sucker. That's right. Mm hmm. You got something to do, roach muncher. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You got something to do, crack taker. Amen. You got something to do, wine lover, champagne toaster, Go ahead. twerk woman. Mm. Amen. Down low man. Go ahead. You got something to do. But he that doeth. He that, no, he that go to church. He that doeth. He that go to church and sing on the choir. But he that doeth. He that play the organ in church. But he that doeth. Yo, going to church ain't worth a bat that spend the night in the bell tower. That's right. Do you hear the Bible talking? But he that doeth. What well, good is you? What good is my wife telling me? All right, Gino, come on and eat. And I come at the table and just sit. Just sit. And then complain, girl, I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. She gonna look at me like I lost my mind. That's right. She gonna tell me, look, the food is right there. Eat. Amen. Don't sit there and complain. Eat. Mm -hmm. Them eyes gonna start shifting. That mouth gonna eat. <laughs> Stop complaining. That's right. You want God to do something for you, mm -hmm. Mr. Tough Man? And Mr. I believe you cute woman, yeah. you want God to do something for you? Then why do you think you don't supposed to do nothing for him? That's right. How did you get so arrogant That's right. and self-righteous and self-centered? You think God made you to walk around here like a wild dog? Go ahead. God made you for his glory. That's right. I'm my own man. You're nothing but a pile of dust. That's all. Like I told you last night, all of us know somebody that's dead now. Amen. They dead. 
whether it's your mother, your father, sister, brother, cousin, aunt, neighborhood, friend, whatever you want to call him, man. He's dead. Right. She's dead. They're not here now. That's right. But you got that same appointment coming. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. You got this. I don't care. Sometimes when a person dies, sometimes they, their friends go to the grave and pour liquor over the casket, you fool. That's a fool. Or they throw a few bags of cocaine in the coffin, you fool. Amen. Or they write on their car, R-R-I-P, rest in peace. <laughs> what kind of peace he going to have? He was a crack dealer, dope dealer, alcoholic. He ran after every woman he wants. She ran after every man she wants. It ain't no peace for the sinner. No. If you want peace, you got to come over here with Christ. That's right. Ah, That's right. Ah, Amen. If you want peace. Yeah. Glory to God, you got to come over here with Christ. That's right. Moses said, you that is on the Lord's side, come to me. That's right. Didn't they say so? Amen. Otherwise than that, you will live a miserable, wicked, hell-bound, ungodly, foolish life. Again, look at the vicious cycle that you're constantly living. Cycle of cigarettes and drugs and just half parties where you sit back and get high all night and you say man Pastor Jenny don't knock it till you try it boy that's <laughs> living they ain't living no you call that living no, no. this is what the bible call it the bible says she that live in pleasure is dead yeah. while she live oh. so what you call living God called death yes that's right and the sting of death is sin. That's right. And the price of sin is death. It is written, the wages of sin is death. Wages are paid. Yes. You're going to get paid for your sins. Oh, yes. Glory to God, if you don't want to get paid for your sins, I'm advising you to turn your life, your mind, soul, body, and your behavior over to God. Not everyone that saith unto me. This is Matthew. This is Matthew, I believe. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Not everyone that Jesus talking. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Shall get into God's kingdom. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. All right, you that's living together and not married. You know that's not God's will. No. You know God ain't, you know it ain't the will of God for you two to be shacking up. No. Eh? No, no. You shacking up, she having babies, and y'all raising children up in a shacked up house. That's right. And then your child, he learned how to shack up because the daddy shacking up. And he get a woman and bring her in the house with his mama and daddy. And all of y'all shacked in the family. That's right. All shack in the family. Amen. All in the family. The shack house. Amen. Eh? That's right. The shack house, I said. That's right. Oh, that's a God. Amen. I want you shackers. Huh? Shackers. You shackers. Amen. You better get this. That's right. Mr. and Mrs. Shacker. Amen. Amen. You know you know better. Amen. You know you know better. Go ahead. You look at me like I'm talking some foreign language. You know better. Yeah. I'm talking to you, shacker. That's right. I want to say, Pastor Jennings, I... I, the church I go to don't preach against that. That's why you've been shacking so long. Shacking so long. Uh, but I want to tie your shack down. Amen. Tie down on a huff and puff until I blow your shack down. <laughs> That's right. Ah! That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? Not everyone that saith unto me, take Lord, God. Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, 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 shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, shall get into God's kingdom, but, but he, he that doeth the will of my Father, that doeth God's will, which is in heaven. You got God's will to do. That's all right? Many will say to me in that day. Look at here. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, 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 have we not prophesied in thy name? That's what folks are doing now. Pastor Jennings, I watch you on television every day and I enjoy it. And enjoy it. Amen. I have people write me, Pastor Jennings. I have, we don't miss you. Some mm -hmm. of you watch the telecast while you drinking and smoking <laughs> your reefer and you be, she be walking around there, not your wife. She be walking through the house with just a slip on. Hey, Bill, that, uh, that, that, that pastor, uh, Gino, I think his name, he's on. All right, I'll be there. He go, Bill, come in with his drawers and beer. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Bill ain't your husband and Jacqueline not your wife. That's right. She's sitting on one side in her slip and old big guzzling Budweiser Bill is sitting on the other side and he draws looking at Pastor Jennings yeah, preaching Pastor against Jennings. them both. That's right. Yeah? Amen. And then when we preach against Shaq and Bill look at Jacqueline, Jacqueline look at Bill and then she said, why you got to keep listening to him? <laughs> <laughs> 
Why you got to keep listening to him? You know, he tell the truth about things, but I don't see nothing wrong with the way we live. And don't you have morals? Amen. Stop acting like a fool and justifying yourself living like a sinner. That's right. You was made by your creator. That's right. And you was made for one reason, to live for God and if need be, die for God. That's right. That's what God made you for. Amen. Whether you obey God or no. not, you know God ain't made you to be out here like the fool Go you ahead. are. Go ahead. Look at you. You've been acting like a fool since a teenager. That's right. Now you're in your 20s and your 30s and 40s, and you ain't found no magic water no. that makes you young again. No. I don't care how young you feel. Right. Your soul is traveling to the grave. For ye know what commandments we gave you. Do you hear this? In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and at verse 2. Ye know what commandment we gave you. By the Lord Jesus. By the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. This is God's will. Even your sanctification. And what? That ye should abstain. That ye should stay away. That ye should abstain from fornication. Stay away from fornication. Now look at you. Look at you. Look at you, viewers. Viewers. You that's in the shack house. Amen. Hey Amen. I want to briefly talk to my shackers. shackers. The shackers that are shakers. <laughs> that's right. You know that's not your wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that ain't your husband. You know it's not. And you just stand around and cook for him, you know, in your underclothes, half naked, and he, he just sit around and then he cussed you out and beat you and slap you around, and you sit there and take it from a man who's not even your husband? That's right. That's right. That's the price of shacking. <laughs> Amen. You get beat up and yeah. slapped around in a black eye. Oh, yeah. And then he make it up to you by having fornication, fornication. with you. Fornication, that's right. Ah! This is the will of God. This is God's will. Even Hallelujah. your sanctification. I want you to hear me, brother and sister. Hallelujah. Shaka, Hallelujah. shaka, shaka. That's why some of you don't want to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Sister, this is why you don't want to do it because you're dependent on him. Yeah. Uh, you're depending on him. You're living under his roof and he's buying the food and you don't have a job so the way you exchange what he do for you is by giving him your body give your body to god that's right you want to give somebody your body so much won't you give it to god amen god said i made you for my glory that's right didn't they say so that's right ah! amen what did the holy ghost say for this is the will of god it says god will even your Hallelujah. sanctification all right thank god listen the will of God was sanctified. That's right. This is a holy sanctified church. That's right. It's for your sanctification. What is God telling you, human family? God made you that you may be set apart. Yeah. When a thing is set apart, it's sanctified. That's right. When a thing is sanctified, it's separated. That's right. When a thing is separated, it's put away for the usage of God. That's right. Ah! This is the will of God. I say, Amen. Amen. He wants you to be sanctified That's right. and holy. That's right. Ah! This is the will of That's God. That's what God wants. Amen. Charlotte, Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. Yeah. That's what God wants. That's right. God wants you to be sanctified. That's, that's right. Not only Charlotte, they want the whole state of North Carolina Amen. and all of America and the rest of the world. That's right. God is calling for sanctification. sanctification. And just like God is calling for sanctification, the devil don't want you to be sanctified. That's right. Now you better give me the book of Jasher, son. Jasher. You better give me the book of Jasher. I want to work on spiritual distraction. Amen. Because the devil bring all type of distractions to keep us from giving God what's due him. That's right. His God want us to give ourselves as a sacrifice. The devil don't want you to do that. No. His God want us to be sanctified, set apart from him. The devil don't want you to do that. His God say, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh. The devil don't want you to do that. That's, right. That's why it's a, it's a struggle yeah. for that man to stop smoking and that woman to stop smoking. So look at you. Something only three inches long you are slave to. That's true. It got you losing sleep. Got you waking up at night, hunting around the house, clearing your eyes up, wanting to know, cussing, where are my cigarettes at? Yeah. Did you move my so-and-so cigarettes? Look at you, cussing like a mad dog, Go ahead. scrambling on the floor, looking under the bed and ready, all out, half naked, two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Up and down the street looking for stores. That's right. Looking for cigarettes. That's right. 
Look at how the devil got you Amen. like a buck-eyed fool. Amen. Huh? Amen. I was just stretching. <laughs> What's the matter? Cigarettes. Cigarettes. Cigarettes, I said. Amen. Go ahead. You're a slave. Go ahead. Black slave, white slave, yellow slave, blue slave. Amen. Any time or anything got you into captivity other than God himself. That's right. And got you lose control. Yes. It's, it, it's your master and you are the slave. Amen. Get me now. I want to soak you. In the book of Jasher, chapter 23. Follow me. And we'll start reading at verse 22. All right. And Ishmael said to Eliezer. Now, let me give you a background story about brother Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham had a son named Isaac. And Isaac's mother name was Sarah. That's right. And Abraham had another son named Ishmael. Yeah. And Ishmael's mother was the Egyptian maiden uh, named Hagar. The Apostle Paul says Hagar is Arabia mm -hmm. and Sarah is Jerusalem. That's right. Meaning that the Palestinian and the Jewish community both have the same father. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? Amen. Now, Abraham was called the father of faith because he believed and trust God. And we, the New Testament church, are called the children of Abraham because we believe in the God of Abraham. That's right. And let us understand this. Abraham, God was one. Yeah. Abraham, God was not a trinity. No. Abraham, God was not three. Abraham, God was not black, brown, or white. Abraham, God was simply spirit that made the world by himself. That's right. Made the world with himself. Yes. Made the world for himself. That's right. Now, here's Abraham's son by the name of Isaac. God charged Abraham to offer up Isaac. Mm -hmm. But you bear in mind, the devil will not let a sacrifice be given. Yeah. Without throwing a hindrance, they keep that thing from being offered. That's right. And I want you to look at yourself now. Yeah. Are you trying to get right with God? Yeah. Go ahead. In the midst of your trying, does it look like everything is thrown in your path? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes bad news yeah. cause you not to be prayerful as you want. That's right. Cause you not to even want to come to church. That's right. You see, a lot of folk got this notion that serving God is just kind of like the Girl Scouts on the corner smiling, selling cookies. <laughs> you know, like the way Joel Austin make it. <laughs> Going to church is a wonderful thing. It's a, it's a happy day in the neighborhood. A uh, Mr. Roger salvation. <laughs> That's right. A <laughs> uh, right. Mr. Roger salvation. Amen. Brother, when you know anything about the Bible, serving God, the Bible call it a sacrifice. No sacrifice in the Old Testament that ever been offered, been offered without being abused. That's right. All sacrifices were abused. Oh, yeah. They had to be cut. They had the blood had to drain down the altar yeah. and they had to be set with fire yeah. until there's nothing left but ashes. That's right. The lamb that was offered in the Old Testament went through pain. Yeah. Pain was part of the offering. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. Lord, thank God, I want you to get this. And Ishmael said to Eleazar. Yeah. Now my father Abraham is going with Isaac. Listen, to bring, my father Abraham is going with Isaac. To bring him up for a burnt offering to the Lord mm -hmm. as he commanded him. Now when he returneth, he will give unto me all that he possesses. Yes. To inherit after him, for I am his firstborn. Yeah, look at him. I'm, I'm his firstborn, and when he come back, he going to give me what belonged to me. Why, why, why was his mind on that? on that? That's where many of us are. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Besides offering ourselves, our mind is on what we possess. Amen. Some people are scared to give their life to God because they're scared of what they're going to lose. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's judge ourselves. Mm -hmm. Would you rather lose your life and then go to hell or lose that woman that's not your wife? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, true. Would you rather lose your life and burn in hell or lose that man that's not your husband? That's right. Would you rather lose your life and burn in hell or lose that whiskey bottle? Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. You judge. What's more important to you? The man? The woman? The car? The bank account? The land? Or God? 
Because there's all, out of all I named, only one gave you life. That's right. And that's the Lord, is it not? That's right. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh the way. Amen. That man ain't give you life, and that woman ain't give you life. No. Right. That money ain't give you life. I keep telling people, God keep proving to people, you don't own nothing. Yeah. Right. He come along and bring a tornado or a hurricane or a twister, level your house to the ground, and the only thing you left, you hiding in your tub. That's true. And you got a tub, but you ain't got a bathroom no more. That's right. Yeah. That's right. God come and knock your whole house down. Yeah. Take your car and it's sitting on somebody else's roof. Oh, yeah. God keeps showing arrogant men and conceited women. Nigga, you came in the world. Nigga, you shall return. God keep proving to you that you don't owe nothing. Nothing. Nothing, I said. That's right. That's why I don't care how rich you are, how size house you got, the kind of car you drove, nigga, you came in the world, nigga, you shall return, brother and sister, you bear in mind, right. you bear in mind, you only have the breath in your nostrils. It, it'll be gone soon. It. It'll be gone. You'll be just like the fella that I grew up with that I was telling the church about last night. My, 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 my younger sister called me last week. And told me about a death of a brother I grew up with. They said they was in some fella's house watching a ball game. And it was getting late in the hour. And they said, well, look, come on, it's late. Let's get ready to go. And they was nudging him. Henry, come on, Henry, it's time to go. Henry was still sitting there with his eyes open. God stepped in. God, listen, the, 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 the ball game didn't, didn't stop God. No. And neither was God distracted by the ball game. That's right. Yeah. That's right. God wasn't worrying about who was going to shoot the hoop or who was going to catch the pass. Amen. God wasn't looking at a field goal. No. Uh-uh. Henry time, Henry time was up. Think about it. Henry had in mind to watch the game and enjoy himself. Yeah. God had in mind that could be your last stop. Hallelujah. That's your last stop. And so while they were shaking Henry, and he was just sitting there, eyes open, but God put him into darkness. My Lord. Snatched the breath out of his body. Amen. Someone say that's a good way to die. No, the best way to die is when you die in God. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's the best way. That's right. Hallelujah. Take God on high. Amen. Hey man, you dying being a millionaire with no God, they ain't no good way to die. No. You died having sex with no God, they ain't no good way to die. No. Blessed is he who die in the Lord. The Lord. Yeah? That's right. If I'm gonna die, let me die in the Lord. That's right. Who you get what I'm telling you? That's right. What did he say? Now when he returneth, now when he returns, he will give unto me all that he, he possesses. Give me all that I possess. To inherit after him. Glory to God to inherit after him. For I am his firstborn. Uh -huh. And Eliezer answered Ishmael. That's and the way said, some family members are. Sometimes the worst thing can happen in a family is the death of a parent. True. Sometimes the family was close until mama died or daddy died. All of a sudden, the family lose their mind. That's true. Fight each other over a house. That's right. Fight each other over a plot of land. That's right. Fight each other over the hog that mama left or the cow that cannot give milk that daddy left. Amen. Uh, Amen. Fight each other over a horse that's been ridden so long the back sunk in. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Fight each other over a car or a wheel. Two blood brothers yeah. will stop speaking. Two sisters won't speak to each other because one or two became so materialistic fools. That's right. That's right. That's right. Nigga, you came in the world, human family, yeah. and nigga, you shall return. That's right. You walk around here cussing and fighting and want to take each other to court over houses and land. Yeah. I want the whole world to understand your eyes going one day closed, not by on your own. Yeah. Or they're going to be left open, not on your own. That's right. You're going to be somewhere arguing and fussing and cussing or gambling or dancing and God's going to step into the party. Yes, he, he ain't got to look for you. He know where you are. That's right. God ain't got to. I mean, he know everything. That's right. He know your uprising, your downsetting. He know your thoughts are far off. Mm -hmm. He know what you're going to do before you do it. He know the ending of a thing before it begins. That's right. You getting all dressed, getting like Disco Jack. Yeah. Amen. Putting on your three-piece bone suit and your black shirt with your collar spread. Standing. Standing. Yeah. Right. Amen. Want to go like Disco, Disco Jack. Amen. 
And here you get all getting dressed for your funeral and don't even know it. That's true. Getting dressed for your for the undertaker. That's right. Don't even know it. That's right. And here you go out ready to do the town. Got a woman on each arm. And before you know it, you step out, go to the men's room, take a few blasts of cocaine up your nose. Yeah. Before you know it, God said, that's enough. That's right. That's right. That's enough. You lived here in vain. You lived on this earth 29 years. Mm. And I gave you time while you was young. Yeah. I told you to remember me while you're young. While you're young. And here you just snort cocaine and party and act like a fool. I ain't going to let you out the bathroom. That's right. Come on, soul. Go ahead. Come on, soul. That's right. God snatched the soul of that man and that woman right out of him. Oh, yes. Body drop. That's right. In the bathroom. Yeah. And they can't open the door because your corpse is blocking it. Yeah. And they don't know what's wrong. That's right. Time done pass yeah. until someone broke in and find your cocaine snort filled body. Go ahead. Died a sinner. Yeah. And then you died a sinner and your family want to give you a so-called Christian burial mm. and they hired some drunken priest that's right to tell you well I see brother John <laughs> brother John done went up there I see him with his mother I want to say to the Brown family have faith <laughs> I want to console in you believe I see brother John up there with his mother his mother is welcoming him with open arms and saying Johnny <laughs> Johnny, oh Lord. <laughs> what to say? Yo, Jerry Carroll head Reverend lying to you, brother. That's right. Huh? That's right. Johnny's on his way to hell. Amen. You live like the devil. You going with the devil. That's right. Huh? That's right. Oh, if you live that life, that's where you're going. That's where you're going. Is that the truth? Amen. If listen, have it ever? Have you ever? Heard that someone in your neighborhood got killed or died, and the way they died didn't surprise you yeah. because the way they lived. That's right. That's right. Your eternal life is centered to the way you live. Amen. Amen. Let me make it plain to you. Yeah. Your eternal destination is centered based upon the way you live right here. That's right. Amen. Right here. Amen. That's right. Lord Jesus. You can go to any false prophet, look at TD Jace, Creffler Old Nickel, or Joel Cotton Candy Allstein. <laughs> they can smile to you all day and give you a motivational uh, speech, and then you think you're a Christian and you walk around on Sunday after rapping Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then Sunday you in the same. Gone up yonder, <laughs> gone up yonder to be with my Lord. Oh, oh, <laughs> gone up yonder. You ain't going up yonder, you're, you're going, going to hell. That's right. Eh? That's right. Uh, change the lyrics. Going down yonder, <laughs> going down yonder to be with the devil. That's right. That's where you go and beer guzzler, yeah. joint smoker, mm -hmm. cigarette smoker, tobacco chewer, crack snorker. Mm -hmm. Hey man, that's where you're going. That's right. That's where you're going, pole dancer. Go ahead. That's where you're going, twerk the smurf. <laughs> that's ahead. where you're going, Amen. brother on the down low, yeah. homosexual. Yeah. You're, you're going down yonder. Damn, and I don't mean to Miami, Florida either. No, no. Or you get the old troublemaker. That's right. What the Holy Ghost said? And LEAs are answered Ishmael. That's why folk don't like this preaching. They say he don't preach. He fuss. You call it what you want. Oh, as long as it burn your britches. That's right. Huh? That's right. It's still the truth. Amen. I wanted to burn your britches enough until you run to water and say, baptize me That's right. in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Huh? Yeah. Glory to God, when you feel, when you, when you feel the flames of hell riding on you, you look and run. Pastor Jennings! Pastor Jennings! I'm going to be like, what you want? Baptize me! Baptize me. Why are you yelling so? There's fire back there! <laughs> That's right. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. Like I say, you see, I'm from the hood, brother. Where we, we would mix it up, you know. You all right. Glory to God. Now, I don't care how tough you are. Yeah. You let someone throw gasoline on that fella. Amen. And put a match on him. Now, I got a heavy voice. 
But I guarantee if my body break out in flames, I'm not going to be, oh. <laughs> oh, that hurt. My God, man, my voice going to be an elevator. Ah! I don't, I don't care how clean you are. You ain't going to be on fire, Stolen. There you go. Uh, uh, there's no such thing of burning and you cool. No. <laughs> you ain't cool burning. Amen. Oh, man. That, that hurt. That gave me pain. I, I got third degree I got third degree burns, man. <laughs> Am I right? That's right. Not that. No, no. Them flames that knock the curls out your hair. Knock the dye out your hair. Yes, it will. And they take them fake eyelashes and disintegrate them. That's right. And they take your tattoos and change them colors. That's right. You will understand that you were made for God's glory. Yeah. And you're going to realize when the holy God of Abraham smote you one day. That's right. What did he say? And Eliezer. Give chapter and verse again. Still in Joshua chapter 23. Now at verse 24. Follow me. And Eliezer answered Ishmael. Uh -huh. And said, surely Abraham did cast thee away. With thy mother. Yes. And swear that thou shouldest not inherit anything of all he possesses. All right. And to whom he will give all that he has with all his <clears throat> treasures. Yes. But unto me his servant who has been faithful in his house, who has served him night and day and has done all that he desired me. To me will he bequeath at his death to all that he possesses. Yes. And whilst Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, Satan came Hallelujah. and appeared oh, to Abraham oh, in the figure oh, of a very aged man. Amen. Now, Satan, Abraham was on his way. That's right. To offer up his son Isaac. That's right. But Satan came. Satan came and appeared. Now, to how Abraham did he appear to Abraham? In the figure of a very aged man. Holy. Amen. The reason why Satan comes to Abraham as an aged man. Because it is the nature of an elder man not to listen to a young man. That's right. But if an elder man talking to an elder man, at least there's an exchange or maybe a consideration of the information that another gives. That's right. So Satan comes right. to Abraham as very a aged. very aged man. Very aged. Meaning he comes with the appearance of being wise. That's right. Wise and experienced. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we'll stay And let us remember, mm -hmm. not that Satan is a man. No. But the appearance of a very aged age man. Very aged man. Because this aged man was the old serpent. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> That's right. The aged man was the old serpent. That's right. Old serpent. Old deceiver. Yeah. Age man represent he's a master of deception and he's been tricking, conning, manipulating, seducing for years. Amen. Age man. Amen. Old deceiver. Right. Old liar. Old trickster. That's right. That's right. Oh, it's a God. Satan came. Satan came. And appeared to Abraham. Appeared to Abraham. In the figure of a very In the aged figure. Man. Of a very aged man. Humble. Amen. Humble. Now, he come imitating the character of Abraham. That's right. Abraham was a humble man. Humble. So Satan come in the image of humility. That's right. In other words, whatever it takes to get your confidence. Yeah. Huh? Whatever it takes to get your confidence before I destroy you. That's right. Uh -huh. And appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man. Yes. Humble. Humble. And of contrite spirit. And of contrite spirit. Amen. Now he appears to have the same spirit of Abraham. My Lord. Not a contrary spirit. Contrite. Contrite. Like contrite. the Bible talk about a broken and a contrite heart. That's right. Listen. And he approached Abraham. Now. He approached Abraham and said to everybody him, who claimed they're your brother or sister may not be your brother or sister. True. In other words, this shows you that even the devil can place people in your life yeah. that appear yeah. to be your brother and that appear to be your sister. 
to get close enough to you to stop your journey towards the kingdom of God. That's right. And That's right. Glory to God. Do you see this? And he approached. This is so beautifully outlined. Oh yeah. Come on, son. And he approached Abraham. He approached. Abraham and said to him and said to him art thou silly or brutish mm. that thou goest to do this thing to thine only son look he come old looking wise a humble appearance humble. contrite spirit that's right but his message mm -hmm. is against the will of God that's right. to get Abraham to rethink what he's about to do according to God's will. That's right. And that's all the devil wants you to do is rethink. Oh, yeah. Reconsider that you want to be saved. That's right. That's what the devil wants. Here you want to repent of your sins to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and get on yeah. God's side. So the devil will send someone that's your age, of your generation, to cause you. Uh, look, man, come on, man. We had some good times together, man. Yep. I know you like to hear that cat, Pastor Dennis, but come on, dog. Amen. Look, man, I'm saved, too. I'm saved. I go to church, dog. Yeah. I, I still smoke. Look at me, dog. I still do it. <laughs> go ahead. The devil send one of your friends you haven't heard from in God knows how long. Or send your mother. Or send your sister. Or send your cousin. Yeah. The devil send anyone or anything that it takes as a distraction That's right. to keep you from offering yourself to God. That's right. Wonderful. Are you listening? Wonderful. So this did not exempt the prophet Abraham. That's right. It mattered to the devil that Abraham was a prophet. No. The devil don't care. What the devil don't want out of us is cooperation and obedience to God. That's right. And to keep us from cooperating and to keep us from obeying, he will come as us, mingle with us, associate with us, eat with us, dine with us, right. until he gained the confidence and then put you to death or discourage you from doing what God say you should do. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. He don't care you speak in tongue. Amen. You shout, he shout. He'll out shout you. Or he'll clap so you can don't lose rhythm. Amen. You out there shouting the devil out there. You act like you're in the spirit. Huh? Glory the devil, like, hey. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> huh? That's right. Do you hear this? Satan came and appeared Glory to Abraham. Glory to God. Satan came. Let us not forget. Satan came. Yeah. And appeared to the man of God. In the figure of a very aged man. This goes to show you that not even Satan want a man of God to stay on course. That's right. That's right. That's right. Not even Satan want a man of God to stay on course. That's right. So a man of God is even subject to get distracted from the will of God. Amen. Amen. Wonderful teaching. Are you listening? Wonderful Amen. teaching. Hallelujah to God. Come Sa on, son. Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man. Yes. Humble and of contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. And he approached Abraham and said to him, all right. Art thou silly or brutish? First, he wants to belittle him. Yeah. Are you silly? Mm. Aren't you brutish? That thou goest to do this thing this day to thine only you son. You gonna go and go offer up your only son? For God gave thee a son in thy latter days. Wait a minute. Mm. Do Satan not use truth mm. to get you to go against God's will? That's right. That's right. But he used truth and manipulate that truth. And he presents truth in a different manner from what God presented. That's right. Truth with the evil intent is the manipulation of truth. That's right. Like these television preachers. They use the Bible with the money making intent. So they read scriptures of truth. 
and then handle that truth deceitfully to make you think the only way to be saved is to be broke. That's right. The only way to get to heaven is to give God all your money. Yeah. Or your great blessings in life is when you got a Rolls Royce and a mansion. That's right. Your great blessings in life, true prosperity, as I often say, is not money, it's not houses, it's not land. True prosperity is the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of who God is. Right. And when you learn who God is, God will teach you who you are and what you should be and what you should not be. That's right. You can have enough money till you fill this room. If you walk in this life without God, all your life is in vain. That's right. Come on, son. For God gave thee a son in thy latter days. God gave you a son in your last days. In thy old age. In your old age. And wilt thou go and slaughter him this day? Mm. Satan want Abraham to think. What was Satan doing? Planting seed. That's right. Planting seed. So Abraham's thought process can be around that food for thought. That's right. To derail him because he was going to offer up Isaac and Satan did not want Isaac to be offered and did not want Abraham to obey God. That's so what's the best way? Come as someone aged like him mm -hmm. with the appearance of wisdom like him but yet subtle of heart. That's right. Uh -huh. For God gave thee a son in thy latter days. Yeah. In thy old age. Uh -huh. Wilt thou go and slaughter him this day? Will you go kill him? Because he committed no violence. He didn't do nothing, Abraham. And wilt thou cause the soul of thine only son to perish from the earth? Now he want to make Abraham feel bad of his agreement and his pact. That he made with God. That's right. He wanted Abraham to not look at it as a sacrifice, but look at it as you about to commit murder. That's right. That's right. Satan don't want you to look at this as the church of Jesus Christ that's offering you eternal life based upon the laws of scripture. That's right. Satan said, it's a cult. That's what I'm saying. That's right. That's right. It's a cult. You got to give up your second wife. You got to give up your second husband. Oh, man, that's a cult. We can't live together no more. We ain't married. No. Oh, man, can you know that's a cult. We can't smoke. We can't drink. Wait a minute, honey. I can't wear pants. No, you can't wear. Wait, what? Hold on. What? God said he accept me like I am. God ain't never told you that. That's right. That's one of them scriptures that came from out of a, 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 a Bisquick box. Amen. <laughs> huh? That's one of them home-based scriptures. The false prophet shook it out of a Bisquick box, put it together. Oh, God accept you where you are. Ain't no Bible said that. Amen. That's right. If God accept you the way you are. Why he preach change? Amen. Why did the Bible preach change? Amen. He told the apostle, when thou art truly changed, when thou art truly converted, That's he right. don't accept the way you are and remain that way you gotta change that's right you may come to him one way but when he's done with you he gonna have you another way another way that got to be some change amen mm -hmm. for god gave thee a son in thy latter days yes in thy old age uh -huh. and wilt thou go and slaughter him this day yes because he committed no violence yes and wilt thou cause the soul of thine only son to perish uh -huh. from the earth Doest thou not know and understand what? that this thing cannot be from the Lord? Amen. Amen. Do you hear this? Doest thou not know and understand? This is where many of us mm -hmm. have failed. Amen. We have had dreams, yes. ate something heavy at night. That's right. I had one of them bean dreams. That's right. Bean dream. Dream that come from an overdose of beans. Black eyed pea dream. That's right. Somebody else come to you with a dream. The Bible said a dream come through the multitude of business. 
Because when God brings something, he don't contradict his word. No. It's according to his word. Right. But don't take a dream and try to make it his word when it ain't got nothing to do with his word. That's right. Look at what Satan mm -hmm. said to the man of God. Doest thou not know and understand that this thing cannot be from the Lord? That's what people have told me about this great work. True. There's all these thousands That's repenting true. of their sins, going down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and many are saying this, this, that stuff Pastor Jen is doing can't be of God. Be. <laughs> well, I have to say like Nicodemus said, no man can do what thou doest except God be with him. That's right. I mean, I'm not bragging in myself, but I'm glorifying God in me. That's right. And ain't nobody can do what God have me doing unless God be with him. That's right. I had one man write me and say, well, look, why don't you just step down from the pulpit and let me take over? This is after we doing the work. Lord. One of them hitchhiking preachers. <laughs> Amen. And who just want to jump on board and take the credit. You got people like that. Lord. They see you do all the work by God's permission. They, they want to jump on board and take the credit that they ain't did nothing in. Hmm. That's right. Amen. So just like the devil tried to derail Abraham, mm -hmm. the devil's trying to derail me, yeah. and the devil's trying to derail all them that believe the truth of the gospel. That's right. Amen. He don't want you to be in the truth of God. No. You that are listening to me now that's in Australia mm -hmm. and throughout America and Canada and Europe. Thank God and throughout all of Asia and Africa and the devil don't want nobody no. that want to be right with God to follow the truth of God message. That's right. He don't want it. No. Oh no, he don't want it at all. Oh, I no. think of the man that wrote me a letter and said, Pastor Jennings, why don't you just go somewhere and die? <laughs> he said, just die. Die, die 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 then he wrote are you dead yet <laughs> he said die oh, he said nobody want to hear that so and so in this mf that and that the other stuff you preach it you can complain about me all you want yeah. but when you hit the lake of fire oh, yeah. hell will convert you quicker than we're doing that's right but listen when hell open up and you start to descend you're going to be so humble. Yes, you're going to be so repentant. Yeah. But it's going to be too late. That's right. Lose your pride. Yeah. Lose your arrogance. Mm -hmm. Understand this. Without God, you're not worth anything. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. What did the holy book say? Do thou not know and understand? Do you not know and understand? That this thing cannot be from the Lord? Now, is that woman telling you this, hmm. brother? Yeah. Sister, is that man telling you that? Amen. Sister, are you telling him, hey, look, Freddie, look, we don't need for us to keep sleeping together, living together like this. We're not married. You know the man telling the truth. Freddie, is Freddie getting upset? Mm -hmm. hmm? Is Freddie telling you, well, what you want me to do? What you want me to do? Come on now, baby, baby, you know I love you. Come on. That's right. Huh? That's right. What, Freddie, what, <laughs> what old Fred wants you to do? Free. You got to give Freddie up. You got to give up Paul and give up Peter. You got to give up Mary. You got to give up Pauline. That's right. You got to give them up. Yeah. And you got to accept Jesus above them both. That's right. Huh? That's right. Oh, yeah. I know what we're telling you may be hard. Well, Pastor Jenna, the church I go to, they say Jesus is love. And what happened? I don't hear you talking love this afternoon, Pastor. Something is wrong with that message. Pastor Jimmy, where is your love? <laughs> the Bible says God is love. Yes. And when I bring you the word of God, I'm bringing you the love of God. That's right. And real love don't always agree with you. That's right. That's right. I know my father, when he was living, loved me, but he still took that belt and broke it over my behind. <laughs> Huh? And when that belt was blessing my backside, it didn't feel like it was love. But now as a grown man and look back, 
and I reconsider the things, my God, if I had to do it all over again, I would. That's right. Love and pain go together. Amen. Are you listening? Oh, yeah. Love and pain go together. That's right. For any time that child is loved by her mother and father, that mother and father will chastise that child when need be so that child can stay on track. Right. And that chastisement won't feel good to the child. It won't, it won't tickle the child either. No. That child won't go somewhere. <laughs> And then some children just go overboard. <laughs> See, when I came up, we couldn't get away with that. <laughs> we cried out until the father got tired of it. All right, be quiet. That's enough. <laughs> and you ain't got all the cry out yet. But when father said, that's enough, you sound like you was in reverse. <laughs> like somebody was hit in reverse. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> either way, you was going backward, but you understood. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. A false prophet who's sent by the devil is not sent to work on you with the Bible. No. He's sent to pacify you and massage your wickedness so you don't see nothing wrong with your wickedness. Right. He's sent to make you comfortable being a sinner yeah. so the devil can take you to hell with him. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? Do thou not know and understand? Do you not know and understand? That this thing cannot be from the Lord. Notice mm -hmm. how Satan, the way he appeared, is to get Abraham to reconsider, not to continue to consider what the Lord said, That's right. but now consider what he's saying. That's right. And one thing I say about the devil, he always mixed truth with lies, yeah. like, a, like a tossed salad. Yeah. You know, somebody can put something in a salad that you don't like, mm -hmm. but with enough dressing, the dressing can uh, camouflage the taste yeah. of what you don't like. That's right. And uh, you can put several flies in there. Yeah. And put that old, that, that, that blue cheese nasty looking dressing. Or, or that French other nasty looking dressing. Those, those dressings that look like different forms of cream. Yeah. You know? And when you're done mixing it up. You get sitting there talking, mm, this is good. Mm. Mm, munching on. <laughs> you got the flies. And, um, mm, mm. Woo, you put your foot in there. She's like, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. You put it in there, all right. That's right. So sometimes too much seasoning or salad dressing can disguise yeah. the salad. That's right. Sometimes. The image of humility and the image of godliness and the image of heavenly love. Notice I say the image of. The, image of the projection of it can disguise yeah. the wicked objective of your brother, so-called brother, sister, father, mother, cousin, uncle, or aunt. That's true. Mm -hmm. Doest thou not know and understand that this thing cannot be from the Lord? Yes. For the Lord cannot do unto man such evil upon earth. Now, God told Abraham to offer up Isaac. Isaac. Satan wanted to change it from a good sacrifice mm -hmm. to make Abraham believe what you're doing is evil. evil. That's right. That's right. Notice what Satan calls the sacrifice. For the Lord cannot do unto the man. The Lord cannot do unto man. Such evil. Such evil. Upon earth. Upon earth. To say to him, go slaughter thy child. Viewers, and you that are here, here you want to serve God. Yeah. Have your mother ever told you you want to do something evil? Mm. Because you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Did your mother tell you that? Yeah. Or your father? Did your husband argue with you, woman? Because now you say you want to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Did your wife argue with you, brother? Mm -hmm. 
Because now you want to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. No more beer parties. No more card parties. No more smoking. You done threw all your ashtrays out the house. And you, you done heard a message and come home. Yes, took all the ashtrays, threw them out the house. All the cigarette, all the beer. Mm. Did she tell you, have you lost your mind? <laughs> Right. What type of crazy coat you win? You know how much money you spend for that one? I said, all right, here you now you're taking off your rings and your earrings, you're throwing away your wigs. I, I, is he telling you, girl, you crazy? That's right. What kind of fool stuff you've been drinking? You listen to that nut ginning so much. Look at you. Now you're throwing away your wigs and your earrings. What's wrong with you looking like that? You telling him, I don't I, I'm not Jezebel. And what, you know what he said? He said, what's wrong with Jezebel? I like Jezebel. <laughs> That's true. He fussing with you. But I like Jezebel. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you see what I'm telling you? Amen. Every time you want to do what God say do, them who don't understand, are quick to fight. The Bible says they speak evil of the thing they understand not. So now when they see our holy women out here with long dresses and long skirts, head covered, no makeup, yeah. no jewelry, conducted themselves in a godly manner, right then they say, oh, you in a cup. But if you out there with a mini skirt on, showing your backside yeah. and tat Tattoos everywhere and high hills and the loudest thing in the neighborhood like a drunken fish. They say, oh man, she got it going on. Yeah. You see how backward they are? Yeah. They Amen. call darkness light and then call light darkness. That's right. They call good evil, they call evil good. Amen. Listen. For the Lord cannot do unto man uh -huh. such evil upon earth. Yes. To say to him, go slaughter thy child. All right. And Abraham heard this. Pay, and, pay attention. And Abraham, Abraham heard this. Heard this. And knew. And knew. That it was the word of Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You have to know for Let us go to school. Satan, his talk goes two ways. Yes, sir. He talk in agreement with the Bible for a while. But then he switch it up switch. to manipulate it and then he lie. That's right. That's why he's called the serpent. That's right. Amen. A serpent have a split tongue at the end. But when a serpent shoot out its tongue, it's not split all the way. That's right. That's right. It's only split on the end. Right. But the rest of the tongue is one. That's right. oh, yeah. Satan is called a serpent because he's divisive. Yeah. He is the author of confusion. That's right. He speaks truth and lie and then he weaves both together. Yeah. And when you don't have knowledge of truth and can't differentiate what is truth from a lie, then he becomes a master in seducing you. That's right. To believe you are doing God's will when you're really doing the will of Satan. That's right. Why you think Satan followers are more abundant than God followers? Yeah. The Bible ain't never said God have more followers than Satan. No. Uh-uh. No. God don't even have more preachers than Satan. That's right. Jesus taught us many, many. false prophets shall come. Many. But when they talk about his preachers, he said many are called, but few. Few. Few chosen. Are chosen. That's right. Broad is the way that lead to destruction. Many that be that go in there at. But when it comes to the straight and narrow way, few that be that find that. That's right. Consider this, brothers and sisters. Out of all the many hundreds of thousands that was living on the earth in Noah's day, only eight was saved by water. Just eight. And God instructed Noah to build the ark so the people can have the opportunity that God gave Noah. For the ark was an act of mercy. 
the ark was a gift from God to save man from the judgment that God was bringing upon the earth at that time. That's right. But they ignored Noah, made mockery of Noah, but it didn't change the fact God lived up to his word. That's right. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man come. People around the world is making mockery of the message of holiness, but it don't change the fact that the day of the Lord is still coming, and holiness is a gift from God to all of humanity. That's right. Is a gift from God. That's right. That's what holiness is. Noah was a gift to humanity. Whenever God sent a man to warn the world, that man is a gift to humanity. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. He's a gift. Yes. Given to the people for a time. Yes. And it, it is wise for those people to listen to that gift. That's right. That's right. Oh yeah. It's a good gift. Oh, yes. It's a holy gift. Go and take off. That's right. That's right. It's a gift from God. Are you listening? Amen. A man of God is a gift from God. That's why Nicodemus said, no man can do what you do unless God be with him. Hallelujah. To be able to have an opportunity to just get right with God. That's right. Go to God. Hallelujah. Have an opportunity to get right with Him. Hallelujah. All around the world. Go right. an opportunity right. to get right with Him. Hallelujah. Got an opportunity to come out of every man-made religion in the world. That's right. That's right. It's a gift. That's right. From God. Amen. Wonderful. Are you listening? Wonderful. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. It's a gift. Oh yes. Moses was a gift to Israel. Yes, he was. That's right. The prophets were a gift to Israel. That's right. The apostles are a gift to the church. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. It's a gift wrapped in the flesh. Go ahead. That's what Jesus was. Go ahead. God wrapped Go ahead. in the flesh. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was a gift. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 That's what Jesus was. That's right. Hallelujah. We couldn't die for ourselves. Oh, no. We couldn't save ourselves. No. So here come God. Amen. Manifested. That's right. In the flesh. Amen. Justified. By the Spirit. That's right. See the angels. Preaching to the Gentiles. That's right. Believed on in the world. Yeah. And received up in the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, listen. Hallelujah. Wonderful. You sinners. Wonderful, wonderful. You sinners. Hallelujah. Holiness. It's a gift yes, from God yes, it to you. To you. Amen. you may ask, what did I do to deserve such a gift? We ain't did nothing. nothing. Amen. It's by God's mercy. That's right. Hallelujah. That's, right. That's all. By God's mercy. Amen. The Bible says not by works of righteousness that we have done, but by his mercy. He saved us. That's right. By the washing of regeneration. Hallelujah. And renewing of the Holy Spirit. A 
with the Holy Ghost. That's right. Don't ever treat this gift the wrong way. Amen. It's a good gift. Good gift. God's word is a perfect gift. Oh yes. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Every human. Yes, sir. They hear the message of holiness. God is presenting you a gift to acquaint you with Him. Holiness will introduce you to your Lord. That's right. He'll make you realize He's just one. That's right. There's none with Him. There's none besides Him. There's none like Him. There's none equal to Him. Search for the heavens alone. Spread upon the earth by Himself. Go ahead. That gift you will know. Go ahead. And you will understand. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Go ahead. Brothers and sisters. Go ahead. We owe God our life. Oh, yes. Everything. Everything. Amen. We breathe by God's permission. We eat by God's permission. You sleep. Oh by God's permission. Amen. You walk by God's permission. Oh yes. You talk. You hear. You smell. Yeah. By God's permission. That's right. You have a roof over your head. That's right. By God's permission. Amen. You have food on your table. By God's permission. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Go ahead. God to God on high. Hold it by God's permission. By God's permission. Go ahead. Hallelujah. No man can accept this credit. No man can accept this credit. That's right. All praises is due to God. That's right. The Lord of heaven and earth. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless the name of God. Hallelujah. What did he say? And Abraham heard this and knew that it was the word of Satan. Abraham heard it and knew that it was the word of Satan. It was the word of the devil. Who endeavored to draw him aside. Wait a minute. The devil endeavored to draw him aside to draw Abraham aside from the way of the Lord I told you amen he endeavored amen to draw Abraham aside from the way of the Lord from the Lord's way that's right that's right have Satan ever came your direction and yeah. thought yeah. and in feeling oh yeah or in dream that's right. To try to draw you aside. From the way of the Lord. Because he know if you work on your mind and heart long enough. Oh, yeah. When you come to church. Yeah. You're not there when you get there. That's right. That's right. You are too preoccupied. Yeah. With foolishness. Oh yeah. Amen. And that foolishness becomes a distraction. From you eating God's word. That's right. And you can't get from God what God wants you to have. Because mentally and emotionally you are preoccupied and distracted. That's right. Are you getting this? Amen. That's what the Holy Ghost brought today. Amen. And brother, it's good too. Oh yeah. Listen. And Abraham heard this. Abraham heard this. And knew that it was the word of Satan who endeavored to draw him aside from the way of the Lord. Yes. But Abraham would not hearken to the voice of Satan. Now, the only reason why Abraham would not hearken to Satan's voice was because he knew God. He knew. Right. And he had enough experience with God to differentiate the sound of God. From the sound of Satan. That's right. You have to have scriptural experience yeah. to recognize that which is of God mm -hmm. 
and that which appear to be of God. That's right. Let me give you a better example. Elijah said, the Lord going to pass by. Yes, sir. And the man of God was on the mountain. The scripture teaches us strong wind came. Rocks rent. Earthquake. Fire came. But uh, the man of God knew God enough to know. He said God was not in the wind. Not in it. God was not in the fire. God was not in that earthquake. That's right. And remember Jesus taught. He prophesied. There shall be earthquake in diverse places. That's right. But at no time did he say all earthquakes God will bring. Right. He just said there will be earthquakes. And diverse places. That's right. But at no time would he say the Lord would be responsible for them all. For all of them. Because in the book of Kings, the Lord was not responsible for that earthquake. That's right. Satan brought it. That's right. And Satan brought it to distract the prophet. Yeah. But the prophet knew God enough to say, mm -hmm. God is not in the God wind. Wasn't in it. God is not in that earthquake. Yeah. God is not in the fire. That's right. Then the prophet heard a small, still voice spoke from heaven. Yeah. He got up and wrapped his face in his mantle and came on out. That's right. That's right. It's wonderful. You have to have experience with God enough to know what he sound like, to know what he feel like yeah. to know what he don't sound like to know what he don't feel like that's right when you have this knowledge then you will know whether you really got the holy ghost yeah. that's right you will know it then that's right whether that's the Holy Ghost speaking through you yeah. or whether you're going through the motion of things. Oh, yeah. You will know whether that man in the pulpit got an anointing from God or does he just making noise? That's right. That's right. To know this, you got to have some divine experience with God and must have scriptural knowledge. That's right. To Listen, let me educate you. You cannot know God beyond what's written. That's right. Even if you have a personal experience, what can we experience that somebody did not already experience? Amen. Whatever happened to you, somebody experienced it already. That's right. The scriptures is our GPS system to life. Yeah. And the book says there's nothing new. Under the sun. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Everybody right. all right? Yeah. Listen. And Abraham heard this and knew that Good it was... And verse, brother. Still in Joshua chapter 23. Now we're at verse 28. Yes. And Abraham heard this and knew that it was the word of Satan uh, who endeavored to draw him aside from the way of the Lord. Be able to recognize the sound of Satan mm -hmm. when you hear it. That's right. Because sometimes evil come wrapped in a package... That look like truth. That's true. Yeah. That's right. It's like someone send you a pipe bomb. Who send you a pipe bomb and write on a package, pipe bomb? <laughs> Amen. They wrap it up. Yeah. They make it look pretty and presentable. Right. To generate your curiosity. And you're like, oh, who send me this? Yeah. And when you unwrap it, why, good night. That's right. It'll push you to sleep. That's right. Listen. But Abraham would not hearken to the voice of Satan. Yes. And Abraham rebuked him so that he went away. Rebuked the devil. It is written, resist the devil. And he'll do what? Flee, Flee from him. But I can't resist what I don't recognize. That's right. The book teaches us don't be ignorant of Satan devices. Yeah. For me not to be ignorant of Satan devices, I must learn what the devil is, who the devil is. Now hold it right there. Amen. Who can give me the correct time? Because really, I actually can take this all the way to the evening. <laughs> give me Revelation. Mm -hmm. And give me Peter. Amen. Satan is called a roaring lion. Keep Satan is called a dragon. Yep. Satan is called a serpent. Uh -huh. Give me Revelation. Mm -hmm. 
And I believe it's Peter I want. He walks right. about as a roaring lion. Right, right. Then I want Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it's the ninth chapter where Satan is called a man. A man, that's right. First in Revelation. And I want to describe all these things to you mm -hmm. because Satan have a lot of time. And I also want the book of Corinthians mm -hmm. where he's called an angel of light. Angel of light. Uh, it's time for us to know the devil. That's right. That's right. Amen. If the book says don't be ignorant of Satan's devices, yeah. you have to know his character. Yeah. Satan is a transformer. Mm -hmm. More than meet the eye. <laughs> Amen. That's true. He is a deceiver. That's true. Satan is a shapeshifter. Yeah. Someone say what? Oh yes. Oh yes. Now in the book of Jasher. Mm -hmm. He came to Abraham Very as an right. old man. Right. <laughs> but Satan ain't no old man. No. And then later on, we're going to read further mm. what he come to Isaac as. That's right. But right now, we want to introduce you to Satan. That's right. Show you his characteristics, some of them. Mm -hmm. And show you why he bear certain titles. Amen. Everybody all right? Listen good. First in Revelation chapter 12, and we're at verse 3. All right. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Uh -huh. And behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Now hold it. Mm -hmm. Let's get cartoons out your head. You know, most time cartoons made the devil. Got on these red litars, tights. <laughs> you know, a tight suit with a big tail and horns in his head and a pitchfork. Amen. That's right. They always make them red. And being that they always make them red, preachers have taught for years, they told their church people it's a sin to have a red car. <laughs> That's right. Because a red car represents the devil. If that's the case, it's a sin to be black because the Bible called darkness sin. That's right. <laughs> You're so foolish. Amen. So deceive of the devil out of hell. Mm -hmm. Come on, Williams, cough it up, son. Revelation chapter 12 <laughs> and read verse 3. <laughs> yeah. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. There appeared, we want to break it down, another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now, sin is called a great red, great red dragon. The reason why it's called red, because he's clearly seen. Right. Red is a bold color. That's right. So Satan have a bold spirit. That's right. Red, one scripture says, though thy sins be red like crimson. crimson. Right. So sin is very bodacious. Yeah. Very clearly seen. Satan is a uh, spirit that stands out, very arrogant, very bold, want to be seen and don't mind showing himself. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, that's why it's called red. red. Dragon is a reptile. And a reptile is considered a carnivore. Yeah. A carnivore is a flesh eater. Well, that's what Satan is. He's a flesh eater, meaning he consumed the righteousness of man and consumed the godly thoughts of man and consumed the godly characteristics of man. He consumed every will that man had that worked in man's favor to the glory of God. Right. So Satan consumed man's flesh and made man submit to his will. That's right. And every time Satan does something, it is not always by the act of force. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. Satan, he just want you to cooperate. That's all. Even Satan, though, don't always force man, but just make man agree. That's right. Did he force Adam to eat? No. Or was it just dialogue between Adam and Eve? Right. Dialogue. Dialogue. Mm -hmm. He agreed. Mm -hmm. Wasn't no force. No. Listen. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Uh -huh. And behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Listen. And seven crowns upon his head. And, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Isaiah. Let's Isaiah. establish what the tail is. Hold Isaiah. it. Now, let me break down the tail. tail. When it says with his tail, mm -hmm. he drew a third part of of heaven, your carnal thinker would think the tail of the dragon or the tail of Satan is here. Mm -hmm. Tail has more than one meaning. That's right. 
you would look at it as back here. The Bible's not talking about that. The third part of heaven, meaning he drew a third part of the angels, or he tricked, or deceived, or conned, or manipulated a third part of heaven, the third part of the stars, the third part of the angels. The angels are called stars because stars reflect light. You don't see the sun at night, but you see the reflection of the sun at night as a result of stars. Now, the angels are the reflection of God. That's right. But if Satan can trick angels, yes, sir. what do you think he can do to you? Amen. Now, with his tail, Satan's tail is not on the back of him. No. Satan's tail is in front of him. In Isaiah chapter 9. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Satan's tail is not on the back of him. Satan's tail is in front of him. That's right. The book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9 and at verse 15. Oh, we're going to take you to this is Sunday school right here. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Give chapter and verse again. Isaiah chapter 9 and at verse 15. Follow me. The ancient and honorable, he is the head. That's God. Mm -hmm. God is the ancient. Right. God is the honorable, honorable. For he's called the ancient of days. That's right. Uh -huh. And the prophet. Prophet means messenger. That teacheth lies. That teach lies. He is the tail. All right. So with his tail, meaning with his message. Yeah. Satan's message was lies. That's right. He said, I will be like the most high. Liar. Liar. That's right. But that message was so seductive and so convincing, a whole third host of heaven got on his side. So now it calls it to be written in the book of Revelation that there was war, war in heaven. In heaven. War in heaven. War in heaven. In heaven, Michael and his angels and fought his angels fought against the dragon. Against the dragon. And the dragon and the fought. dragon fought. And his angels and his angels and prevailed not. And did not get victory. Ne so neither was there place found any more in heaven. After the dragon was put out, after Satan was put out, after Abaddon was put out, after Apollyon was put out, after the accuser of the brethren was put out, put after out. Baal was put out, after the wicked one was put out, after the father of lies was put out after Satan Lucifer the wicked one was put out right. John saw him coming out and saying whoa Woe unto, the, unto inhabitants. the inhabitants of the earth That's right. what did John mean as I, I see what Satan done to heaven and now he's coming to the earth to bring his same power and his Satan. same wickedness that brought confusion in heaven now is coming to the earth that's right. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. that's right and look at the earth yes. now yes they love Satan. Yeah. That's right. They manipulate our children through cartoons of black magic and wizardry and witchcraft so our children can love Satan. That's right. Do you know it's a sin to watch magic shows? Go ahead. It's a sin. Sin to watch magic be performed on television. The Bible called magic sorcery. And the Bible said, I suffer not a witch to live. We don't do magic tricks. Go ahead. In the days of Daniel. Writing came on the wall, many, many to kill you fasten. Nobody could read the writing but Daniel. Yeah. Who did they call? The astrologers, soothsayers, the magicians. That's right. But none can read the writing. That's right. The king said, let Daniel be called. Yeah. I know a man in thy kingdom. Yeah. One whom the holy God is in. It says light and understanding is able to dissolve hard sense. Daniel come. Read the writing. Many, many to kill you fasting. After he read it, he broke it down to the king. Your kingdom is numbered. That's right. You found ways in the balance of found wanting. That's right. The scriptures 
is equal to a foreign language where you have no interpreter. Amen. The preacher is the one that God used to interpret the language of the scriptures so you can walk away and say, I understand. Yeah. Wonderful, brother. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. A man and a woman cannot change if they don't understand how to make that change. That's right. And go into these man-made churches, you will come out more dumber than you were for you winning, more confused than you were when you winning. But God give his preacher a learn tongue to speak a word to them that are weary in season break down the formula of the scripture so the old testament don't contradict the new testament you know in science in science they may take a test tube fill it with one formula take another test tube fill it with another formula and mix them that's what we have old testament new testament and mix them so you can see Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ of the New. That's right. Hey! That's right. Mix them. Not that it's two. Not that it's three. But it's one. Wonderful. You must have scriptural God given talent to decipher, analyze, break down, open up, make plain the language. Of scripture. That's right. That's why so many thousands writing us and say for the first time they understand the Bible now. Yeah. Because it's made plain. That's right. We want people to understand it that way when you stand before God, you won't have no excuse. Amen. Huh? Amen. Anybody all right? Amen. So Satan, mm -hmm. great red dragon. Red dragon. Now let's explain this tale of business. Right. Listen. Back in Isaiah, Isaiah. Back in Isaiah chapter 9. Come on, son. 15. All right. The ancient and honorable, he is the head. Uh, and the prophet that teacheth lies. Yes. He is the tail. The first one that taught a lie was Satan. Yeah. yeah That's right. Now go back to Revelation. Let's see what else is he. Back in Revelation 12, now down in verse 9. All right. And the great dragon was cast out. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. It didn't just say serpent. Old serpent. Old, Old. meaning his experience mm -hmm. and his deeds that he has been doing been around a long, long time. That's right. That old serpent, who is he called? Called the devil yeah. and Satan. He's, he's called the devil mm -hmm. and he's also called Satan. Which deceiveth the whole. How much? The whole world. How much? The whole world. You're in the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. What this book says about the serpent. Amen. Now in the book of I Genesis. I want to debunk what theologians have said and what historians have said that the snake used to walk on his legs like a man. Right. 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 You nut. <laughs> Amen. Snakes don't walk like men. No. Right. Well, Pastor Jennifer, he didn't walk like a man. Why would God cuss it and say it crawl on his belly? We'll break that down break too. Break that down too. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. You better, unless you get Genesis, you better get the book of Ezekiel so we can show you the status of Lucifer. Mm. I want to show you Lucifer's status. That's right. A lot of folks think the devil always exists. The only one always exists was God. That's right. Only, always remember, the only one that always was around was God. That's right. The devil had a beginning. Is that Bible was something that the Lord said, I create good and I create what? Evil. Evil. If something been created, it wouldn't always exist. That's right. Listen. Now in the book of Genesis chapter 3, we're at verse 1. Real quick. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. In comparison. Now he's talking about the natural serpent. Right. He was more subtle than any beast of the field. The reason why the serpent, the snake, the natural snake was because considered more subtle than any beast of the field. Because one thing about a snake is patient. Mm -hmm. It'll wait. <laughs> and a lot of time, because of the colors of its body, it blend in. It camouflages. That's right. And sometimes the prey go back and forth, be right next to the snake. Mm -hmm. And then at the appointed time, the snake strike its prey. Right. Uh -huh. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Yes. Which the Lord God had made. Yeah. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath the God woman, said. Didn't God say. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, yes. but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not touch it, 
ye shall not eat of it. Uh -huh. Neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. Yeah, now hold it. The Bible didn't say she ate an apple. No. Fruit. Fruit. It just says what? Fruit. I don't know whether it's an apple, grape, watermelon. Who knows? Could have been a yam. I don't know. That's right. But one thing I do know, the Bible did not say it was an apple. Fruit of the tree. When it says fruit of the tree, that simply means fruit is something that is produced on a tree. Right. Fruit is as a result of what was planted. That's right. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. All right. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, uh -huh. God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Yes. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Hold it. Lie. Lie. There he go. That's right. The Lord plainly said you're going to die when you do it. Mm -hmm. Now look at the, con the spirit of contradiction. And the serpent Satan is the spirit of contradiction. That's right. Huh? That's right. Remember that. Remember that. Satan is the spirit of contradiction. Go ahead. So whenever you hear a man preaching and yet his message contradict that Bible, he's of the devil. Satan is the spirit mm. of contradiction. That's right. Satan is the spirit of biblical contradiction. That's right. He contradict God's word all the time. Mm. All right. And the serpent said unto the woman, What? Ye shall not surely die. Lie. For Read on. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Truth. That's right. Amen. The day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be open. Lie. Truth. That's right. That's right. The Lord said the day you eat, you're going to die. The Lord, yeah. the devil said, you ain't going to die. Lie. Lie. Then he come back and tell the truth. God doeth know that in the That's day that ye... split tongue of the serpent. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and, and ye shall be as gods. Hold it. Amen. It didn't say you're going to be gods. As gods. I want to break this down, every part of it. Yeah. As gods. As gods. Now Satan understood what that meant. Right. When it says you shall be as gods. As gods. That means knowing good. Knowing good and evil. That's right. Someone said, well, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. Didn't they already know good and evil? No, because the evil wasn't there for them to know. Right. The only thing they knew was good. The Bible said there's none good but one, and that one is who? God. Oh. It wasn't tricked yet. Right. Satan was working on them to be tricked. That's right. Evil was talking to them. Hmm. Evil came to them through words. Mm. He introduced himself through words in a subliminal message to seduce them, con them, manipulate them. That's right. That's when, you, when it said they shall know good and evil, and evil, it was only then they would come to the knowledge of themselves. That's right. That's right. Because within man lieth good and evil. And evil. See, a lot of time a person don't know what they will do in certain circumstances until they got that experience. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's, right. That's right. You get some folks say, well, you know, I've been born again now, and, and uh, the Lord then took the cursing that I used to do out of my tongue. I don't curse no more. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. I don't cuss no more. All of a sudden, you know, they driving and someone cut in front of them. Why are you so and so? They throw that finger up at him and everything. And that, oh, oh, Lord, forgive me. Jesus. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Uh huh. <laughs> are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. Before you make a declaration that you delivered from something, you need experience to determine whether you are delivered from it or you still wrestle with it. That's right. All right, be quick. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Yes. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh -huh. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and, what? and a tree to be desired to make one wise, uh -huh. she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Yes. And the eyes of them both were open. The eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves When their eyes came open, they became enlightened. Before then, they didn't know they was naked. That's right. He walking around free. Mm -hmm. right. Not now. Mm -mm. Eyes open. In other words, they, now they know they're exposed. That's right. Now they know they're in sin. Mm -hmm. Real quick. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the Come garden. Come on, son. You got to read fast. Down in Genesis chapter 3, we're at verse 12. All right. And the man said, the, and the, man said 
The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Yeah. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Mm -hmm. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The serpent took me, and I ate. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, The Lord said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. And then what? And above every beast, and upon every beast of the field. Yeah, every beast of the field. And, and above every beast of the field. Uh -huh. Upon thy belly shalt thou go. Upon thine belly shalt thou go. And dust shalt thou eat now all the it. all the days of thy life. When it says upon thine belly shalt thou go, go, that means Satan was cut down from authority. That's right. Brought low. That's right. Now he's on his belly. Mm -hmm. Being on his belly also means that the earth that he's on was given to him. Right. That's why Paul called him the God of this world. This world. Now you shall eat dust. dust. All the Did days I, of thy wait life. Wait a minute. You're going to eat dust how long? All the days of thy life. We are the dust. That's why Satan slither in and out around us, consuming kings and consuming queens and taking over kingdoms and taking over authority because Satan is in them, of them, and making them bow to him. And a lot of times they can't recognize him, so they mistake Satan for God. That's right. The moment Satan mentioned God, they don't see the devil. No, they don't want to see the devil. That's right. Like the moment Trump mentioned God, that's true. They say he a Christian. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's right. He no more a Christian than I'm Donald Duck's cousin. Amen. You get what I'm telling you? Amen. The moment someone mentioned God, you know, the rappers and these R&B singers can get a reward. They done made music cussing and drinking and shaking they behind and they get a reward. God made this possible. God ain't had you to be out there shaking your rump. No. Half naked. That's right. That's right. Cussing about God, cussing about the Bible. Yeah. Want to kill your mama, want to kill your father and all that. God, that's not, don't blame that on God. God. But again, they call good evil and call evil good. So being brought to the earth, meaning his authority was brought down low. Give me the book of Ezekiel real fast. Now in the book the of Ezekiel sticking. chapter 28 and at verse 13. I want to show you how Satan had a beginning. Yes. And Lucifer was not always the name of Satan. Lucifer was the name of a righteous, holy angel. That's right. He did not become Satan until Satan was found in him. That's right. Listen quick. In Ezekiel chapter 28 and at verse 13. All right. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Yes. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the ounce, and the jasper. Yes. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle. And gold and the workmanship of thy tablets. And of thy pipes was prepared in thee. Don't you mean your pipes? Now, haven't you heard for church, from churches that Satan, Lucifer, was the choir director in heaven? Yeah. Have you heard that? They ain't never been in the Bible. No. These old preacher pulpit liars. Amen. Bible ain't never said the devil was in heaven directing no heavenly choir. No. Can you imagine the devil directing the choir in heaven? Amen. <laughs> Amen. A fool and a good fool. A good fool. Do you hear the Bible talking? The workmanship of thy tablets and, and of thy pipes. And of thine pipes. Was prepared in thee. The pipes of the angel is the voice of the angel. That's right. The pipes of a man is the voice box of the man. That's right. It's the sound that come out the man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Yes. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. He's talking about Lucifer. Lucifer. He ain't talking about the devil. No. It's talking about Lucifer before the devil. That's right. Thou what? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. He was anointed. Anointed. If he was anointed, that means God was using him. That's right. Mm -hmm. and this is long before the devil. Right. Uh -huh. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Yes. And I have set thee so. God said, I set you like this. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. I had you on the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways. Mm. Oh, 
Perfect. At Perfect. one time, there was no wrong, no sin, no wickedness, none whatsoever in Lucifer. That's Not right. in the devil, in Lucifer. Right. Lucifer was simply the name of this angel. That's right. All right? That was perfect in thy ways. Perfect in your ways? From the day that thou was created. What? Till. Wait a minute. What? Till. What? Till. What? Till. Till what? Iniquity was found in thee. Satan was discovered in Lucifer. Mm. That's right. To better understand it, remember Judas? That's right. Who was an apostle? The Bible said, until sin entered into him. He was a holy apostle. Until sin entered into him. So when Satan got in Lucifer, Lucifer took something from Satan, and Satan took something from Lucifer. That's right. Go ahead, what did Satan take from Lucifer? His name. Yeah. What did Lucifer take from Satan? His character. That's right. Until now, woman. A lot of folk don't even know about Lucifer before Satan was in him. That's right. All they know is about Lucifer, the devil. Mm. Are you getting this knowledge? Thou was perfect in thy ways. What time? He was perfect. From the day that thou was created. What happened? Till iniquity was found in thee. Till evil was found in him. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee uh -huh. with violence. Wait a minute. Look, look at what was discovered now. Violence? And thou hast sinned. And you sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane. Out of the mountain of God. I got to get you out of here. I got to get all this wickedness out of here. And I got to get all this unrighteousness out. And I will destroy thee, O covering chariot. O covering chariot. From the midst of the stones of fire. So at one time, Lucifer was holy, mm -hmm. had, authority, had authority, until wickedness is found in him. That's right. That's the same way with us. Yes, That's it is. right. Amen. When wickedness is found in us, Satan wanted to stay there so he could bring us down. Amen. I got to get some more of the characteristics and the attributes of Satan. Let's get the book of Peter real fast. Now in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and we're at verse Now eight. another thing about the old serpent. Another thing about the old serpent. Let me give you another characteristics of a serpent real quick. And then we get the book of Peter. Mm -hmm. A serpent or a snake never kill its prey and eat from the feet. Right. It wraps around its prey, suffocated. That's right. And then what part do he start to consume first? He start with what part first? What part? You, do you have the most problems out of your body or your mind? Mind. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Just as a snake wraps around the body to suffocate it, to eliminate its momentum, Satan wraps around your soul, your being, your scriptural intelligence to cripple your spiritual momentum so you don't do the things God wants you to do and choke out the righteousness of God that was in you. Yes, and then he start with your head by changing your thought process, yes, yes. your thinking, all the thoughts you had towards God. Now, naturally, when a poisonous snake bites you and interject venom, a lot of times it takes venom to fight venom. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. They get an anti-venom mm -hmm. to fight venom. Yeah. It takes God to fight the devil. That's right. You can't beat the devil. No. No way. It takes spirit to beat spirit. That's right. God is a spirit. Then not the apostle John said, I saw another mighty angel in his hand. 
had the keys to the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. Lay hold of the old dragon and bound him in prison. Only the power of almighty God can bound Satan. These lying television preachers get on television and tell you the devil don't have no power. I don't care if you don't believe the devil have power. The devil caused war in heaven and he's causing war on earth and we all feel the effects of it. Amen. Why? Because we are fighting the powers of hell. All right, give me the book of Peter real fast. First now. Peter chapter 5 and at verse 8. Here's another characteristic of the devil. Read fast. Be sober, be vigilant. Give chapter and verse again. First Peter chapter 5 and we're at the 8th verse. Be sober, be, be vigilant. vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil. What do you walk like? As a wrong lion. Doing what? Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The devil is not a cat. No, no, sir. So let us study the nature of a lion. A lion stalks oh, yes, sir. Yeah. his prey. He studied it, stalk it. That's right. And if you know the thing about the animal field, the animal life, the lions first seek after the weakest one. That's right. That's right. And prey, a lion, before it jump on the full male or female buffalo, it'll chase down the baby. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because the baby can't outrun the lion. Mm -hmm. Now, the method of the lion, the cheetah, the cougar, all of them have the same method when they chase their prey. They run you down until you get tired. And then the lion hit the hind feet. Mm -hmm. The purpose of hitting the hind feet is to trip you. Right. And when you trip you up and fall, the next thing that the lion do is pounce upon you. And the first thing the lion do is sink its veins in your neck. Yeah. The objective is suffocation. That's right. I don't care how strong you are. That's right. If your neck is being choked, Go ahead. your momentum mm -hmm. cease. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Satan put a strong hold on you. That's right. So your momentum and God can get slower and slower mm -hmm. and slower until there is none. Right. This is how our momentum. We come to church, faithful dedicated, gave testimonies, I'm determined, sang songs, I'm determined to go through, I'm determined to go through, oh my trial will be over, I'm determined to go through, you know old folk be putting all type of moans on it. well you got to do this lifetime, the book says, know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one receive the prize, so run that you may obtain. When you come into the knowledge of holiness, though, you can't run fast. You got to take your time because you got Satan as a roaring lion, you got Satan as a snake, you got Satan as a dragon, and you got Satan as a man. Many of the characteristics of Satan that is in the earth, sometimes that's totally unrecognizable. My clock is ticking. Go back to the book of Joshua. Remember, Satan comes to Abraham as an old man, but Abraham knew that it was the devil. That's the main point. That's right. Now, let's see how Satan came to his son, Isaac. Now, in the, back in the book of Joshua, chapter 23. Quickly. And we're down at verse 29. All right. And Satan returned. And Wait a minute. For him to return, he had to be there before. Right. Now he comes back again. And Satan returned and came to Isaac. Yes. And he appeared unto Isaac in the figure of a young man. Now he come to Isaac as a young man. He come, come in your generation. Yeah. Talk your talk. Talk your language. Appear to be humble. Right. Appear to be sincere. Get on the choir. Get on the instruments. Be on godly. You'd run around in church. He'd run next to you. You'd run right past each other. Pew, pew. <laughs> One running that way, the other run that way, get it, get it, get it, get it. They just run back and forth, not even hitting each other. It's passing. It's passing. All right. And Satan returned. <laughs> Satan, come on back. And came to Isaac. And come to Isaac. And he appeared unto Isaac in the figure of a young man. And what? Calmly and well favored. Calmly and well favored. And he approached Isaac. He approached Isaac. And said unto him. I told you he's bold. Great red dragon, bold. Notice he don't wait for, wait for you to strike up a conversation. No. Right. He approached Isaac. He just started talking. That's right. Uh -huh. And said unto him. Doest thou not know and understand? Notice, he couldn't get his father to change. Mm -hmm. So he figured he'd go to the son. Right. 
Can't you not know and understand? That thy old silly father. You old. <laughs> Amen. He disrespect his father and insults him. Yes. Yeah. Thine old silly father. Bringeth thee to the slaughter this day for naught. You know your pop coming to kill you? Now therefore. For nothing. He going to kill nothing. you for nothing. That's right. Never mind the Lord told him to do it. Amen. Amen. Never mind the Lord told Abraham to offer up Isaac. That's right. For naught. He come as a young man just like Isaac. He came as an old man, just like Abraham. That's right. All right. Now, therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him. That's the way this generation is to each other. Yeah. Not listen. I don't listen to that passage, Dennis. Mm -hmm. For you, he, know how many, you know how many letters I got from young children who parents threatened to throw them out the house because the, the children want to be baptized? My Lord. I got letters from young teenagers. Their parents threatened to throw them out the house mm. if they agree to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I had one woman say she would rather that her daughter get pregnant and not married than they get baptized. Mm. Had a man say he'd rather that his son die, my Lord, my Lord. get killed in the street, than be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You parents are full of that devil out of hell, God. You were spawned by Satan. Amen. For only a brother or a father are children of hell to wish such wickedness on your son and daughter and hear all they want to do is be right. That's right. That's right. Get me. Now, therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him. Yes. For he is a silly old man. He's a silly old man. And let not thy precious soul. Don't let your precious soul. And beautiful figure. And, ah, look at him. He even compliment night. <laughs> That's right. He pumping him up, ain't he? That's right. The devil pump you up. Amen. Uh -huh. And let not thy precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from the earth. Mm -hmm. And Isaac heard this. And said unto Abraham, Hast thou heard my father? Hey, Pop, did you hear? That which this man had spoken? Uh -huh. Even thus has he spoken. And Abraham answered his son Isaac and said to him, What? Take heed of him and do not. Pay attention to him. And do not listen to his words. Amen. 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 Experience Amen. knew what the devil sound like. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Experience knew what the devil sound like. Amen. Oh, this is beautifully outlined. Oh, yeah. All right. Take heed of him and do not listen to his words, nor, uh, nor attend to him, for he is Satan. Amen. Amen. He called him out, didn't he? Called him out. But let us remember. Satan camouflaged himself yes, he did. as a young man. Mm -hmm. But the experience Abraham was able to see through it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Take heed to him and do not listen to his words nor attend to him. For he is Satan. Yes. Endeavoring to draw us aside this day. Glory to God. From the commands of God. He's endeavoring to draw us aside this day from the commandment of God. And Abraham still rebuked Satan. And Satan went from them. Satan went away. And seeing he could not prevail over them. He could not beat them. What did he do? He hid himself from them. Satan hid himself from them. And went and passed before them in the road. He went past them. Amen. He hid himself from Abraham and Isaac mm -hmm. and went past them. Past them. He went past them. That's right. Uh -huh. And he transformed himself. I told you he's a shapeshifter. Amen. Amen. He went from old man. To young man, young man, now he changed into something else. Listen. And he transformed himself to a large brook of water in the road. Mm. Oh, my God. That transformed. Yes, sir. Amen. Transformed himself to a large brook of water. To a large brook of water. In the road. In the road. And Abraham and Isaac and his two young men reached that place. And what? And they saw a brook large and powerful. 
as the mighty waters. Then what? And they entered the brook and, and passed through it. They passed through it. And the waters at first reached the lake. Uh -huh. And they went deeper in the brook. Uh -huh. And the waters reached up to their neck. Uh -huh. And they were all terrified on account of the water. Hold it. That's something. Legs. Mm. Neck. neck. Show you the different depths of Satan. Go ahead, Legs. Brother. I got to take it apart, Wade. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Neck. Mm. The different depths Amen. of Satan. Amen. Being that the book says don't be ignorant of Satan's devices, mm -hmm. you have to know the depths and angles and areas of Satan. Go ahead. How he differ in his function. That's right. But even though he differ in his function, his function is always motivated for one thing. To destroy. That's right. That's right. Ankle. You don't take water serious. When is that your ankle? That's right. Go ahead. So a lot of time we underestimate the skill of Satan. When he come at us with something that seems light, right. petty, that's right. It's not of a it's not on a felony level. Mm. <laughs> we look at it as a misdemeanor. Mr. Go, Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you understand? Go ahead. You know a felony is serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Misdemeanor. That's right. So a lot of us look at the water at ankle level, mm -hmm. meaning Satan come, you know, lightly, not you know, seem too aggressive or too effective. That's right. So we don't take him serious. That's right. Even though that incident may require fasting and praying, but it's so light to us, we don't do it. That's true. So being that we don't fast and pray when the big thing comes because we didn't fast and pray in reference to the little thing, we fail to be unprepared and unequipped mm. when the big thing comes. That's right. Because you was focused on how minor it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they went deeper Glory. in the brook. Yeah, yeah. Went deeper in the brook. Now remember it was Satan so that means they went deeper in Satan. Mm. They went deeper in Satan. That's right. Go ahead, brother. Hallelujah. For Satan, let's read where he transformed himself again. Back in uh, Joshua 23 at verse 34. And Abraham still rebuked Satan, and Satan went from them. Yes. And seeing he could not prevail over them, he hid himself from them. Uh -huh. And he went and passed before them in the he road. He went and passed before them, he went ahead of them. And uh -huh. he transformed himself. He transformed himself. To a large brook of water in the road. So if they was in that water, they was in Satan. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because he transformed That's right. himself. To a large to a brook. brook of water. A large brook. Large brook. Water symbolized life. Yes, mm. sir. But there's two lives. That's right. There's the life of God and there's the life of the enemy. Yeah. Listen. And they went deeper in the brook. They went deeper in Satan. And the waters reached up to their necks. Meaning they was deeper in trouble. Yeah. Deeper in peril. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the waters reached up to their necks. Then what? And they were all terrified on account of the water. Yes. And whilst they were going over the brook, uh -huh. Abraham recognized that place. Glory. Oh, how God keep dealing with this man. Mm. Abraham, re Abraham knew this brook wasn't here before. That's right. Yeah. Huh? Abraham recognized he that recognized place. He recognized this place. And he knew that there was no water he there before. Knew there was no water here before. And Abraham said to his son Isaac. What did he say to Isaac? I know this place. I know this place. In which there was no brook nor there water. There was no brook nor water here. Now therefore. Now therefore. It is this Satan. It's the devil. That's right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This Satan. He went from old man, young man, large body of water. Do you recognize him? Is Satan always recognizable? 
Do he always give himself away? And before you start looking at others, yeah. you have to first look at yourself. That's right. Listen. Now, therefore, it is this Satan. It is this Satan. Who does all this to us to draw us aside this day from the commands of God. Hallelujah. Amen. He do all this to us. To draw us aside this day. Deceive you. Trick you. Make you weak. Yep. Make you break God's commandment. Yep. Make you lazy about praying. Lazy about fasting. Lazy about going to church. Backbite. Lie. Sneaky. Ungodly. Wicked. Unrighteous. Speak against the truth. Hard head. Rebel against the truth. It is this Satan. Hallelujah. Who yes. does all this to us. He do all this to us. To draw us aside this day. To draw us aside this day. From the commands of God. From what God ordered. And Abraham. And Abraham. A Abraham rebuked him. He rebuked him. And said unto him. What did he say to that body of water? The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Be gone from us. Get away from him. For, for we go by. We. Go by the commands of God. We go by what God said. Hallelujah. 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 We go by the commands of God. What God said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us remember, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. The objective of Satan Hallelujah. is so Abraham and Isaac mm. will not go by mm. the commandment of God. And the commandment of God was Hallelujah. offer up Isaac. And let me tell you about that ram that was in the bush. That ram was predestinated. So you got to know what the ram represents. When Abraham put the wood on the altar, it was wood. Cause it be the man that hang up on the tree. That's right. So the wood being placed on the altar represent the cross itself. And the ram or the sacrifice that was predestinated mm -hmm. represent the predestination of the offering of the body of the son of man. That's right. Let's see how long was the ram predestinated. Now in the book of Joshua chapter 23. And we'll start at verse 69. Listen. At that time. At that time. The Lord appeared unto Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham. And called to him from and heaven. And called to him from heaven. And said unto him, lay not thine hand upon the leg. Abraham was about to slay him. That's right. The Lord said, don't do it. Don't lay your hands on him. Neither do thou anything don't unto do him. Not, don't do nothing to him. For I know that thou fear I know God. you fear me. In, in performing this act. In performing this act. And in not withholding thy son, thine only son, from me. And, and Abraham lifted up his eyes. He lifted up his eyes. And saw. He and, saw. And behold. And look. A ram a was caught ram in the was thicket caught by his in horns. The by his horns. This was the ram. Which the Lord God. This was the ram, the ram which the Lord, the God Lord God had created he in the created earth? Created in the earth in the day in the day that He made heaven and earth. That He made heaven and earth. For the Lord had prepared this ram. The Lord did what? Had prepared this ram. He prepared this ram from that day. From that day to be a burnt offering. To be an offering instead yes. of Isaac. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just like the ram was prepared from that day. Hallelujah. From that day. From that day. Give me the first chapter of the book of Peter. Peter. <laughs> Let's see what the Bible says about this sacrifice. Amen. How long was that around? That's right. First Peter. First Peter chapter one. Lesson. We'll start at verse eighteen. Read fast. For as much as you know that you were not as redeemed much as with corruptible you things, know you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold. From your vain conversation received by traditions from your father. But what? But with the precious blood of Christ. With, with the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb. As of a lamb. Without blemish. Without blemish. And without spot. What? Who verily was foreordained? How long? Before the foundation of the world. I told you. Amen. Before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in these last times for you. From the time he made the earth 
Hallelujah. That ram was prepared, prepared, but then it was manifested at a certain appointed time That's right. for Abraham. For the Lord had prepared this he ram. He prepared the ram. From that day. From that day. To be a burnt offering to instead of ice. To be a burnt ice. offering instead of ice. And this He ram, already had a plan Hallelujah. for that ram to be offered. That's right. And not Isaac. Hallelujah. The whole thing with Isaac was a test mm. for Abraham faith. And Abraham fear towards God. That's right. God Almighty would allow things to happen in our life to try our faith, to try our patience, and to try our humility. Accept the gift today that God give you, which is his everlasting word. Don't turn it aside. Give up and give over to it. Accept it. Repent of your sins. Yes. Ask God to forgive you for all your wickedness. Yes. This is a good gift. Yes. When you Hallelujah. repent, Hallelujah. I won't have to fight with you to be baptized. Yes. Be sorry about every sin under the sun and ask God to forgive you. You ain't got to pray to me. Not between you and God. That's right. And then mean it. Yes. And get ready to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Lord can wash your sins away and start walking in the beauty of holiness. Anybody want to accept this gift that God left here and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ to get your sins washed away and get on God's side once and for all, stand on your feet today. Wonderful. Come on, stand on your feet today. You want to be baptized? Stand on your feet today. Stand on your feet today. All of you that are standing, go right out there in the hall, please. All of you that are standing, go right out there. All of you that are standing, go right out them doors there. All of you that are standing, glory be to God on high. Repent. Acts 2, 38 says, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And be baptized, every one of you. Then Peter said unto them, In the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive, and you the, shall gift. receive the gift. Of the Holy Ghost. We have a gift to give you. That's right. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you want God to rule your life? Anybody else want to be baptized? And be right with God. Stand on your feet. And come on and obey God. Well, Pastor Jennings, I bow my head and raise my hands. That's what a robber tell you to do. Yeah. <laughs> robber throw a gun on your back, bow your head. Raise your hands. Right. Ain't no Bible tell you to bow your head and raise your hands. Bible ain't tell you to pray no sinner's prayer. No. Bible didn't tell you to join no fake church. No. The Bible says repent. Repent. This is what God wants everybody under the sun to do, regardless of race, creed, and color. Give me the correct time, brothers. Hallelujah. Give me the correct time, please. Three o six. All right, let me get ready to let you go because the next session starts at five o'clock. I'm gonna let you go. You go get something to eat and come on back, and let's close this meeting out. God be our helper. Amen. We had a good meeting, God knows. Yes, sir. And let's all stand. Brother Minister Evans will close us out in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, most holy and everlasting God, Lord, we come before you, Lord Jesus, thanking you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for feeding the depths of our soul, Lord Jesus. Lord God, giving us nutrition by your spirit, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we pray, Lord, that this word will take place in the people's hearts and open up their minds and open up their eyes, Lord God, that they might see themselves in darkness, Lord God, and come to the glorious light of the truth, Lord Jesus. We thank you for Pastor Jenny bringing forth the word, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. 
Lord God, bless him, Lord God, that he might continue to bring forth your word. Lord God, let your word heal someone's body today, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for touching the pains in our bodies throughout the years, Lord Jesus. Lord God, but most of all, Lord God, we thank you for bringing us to repentance. Lord God, giving us the gift of the Holy Ghost and giving us the gift of a holy man of God, hallelujah, feeding us with the word of truth. Bless each and every one that have heard the broadcast and that is here, Lord God. Bless them as they go to and fro, Lord God. And bless us, Lord God, that we might obey your word and see you in glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.